Suffer in such a way that the world wants your God. If you're going to go through it, don't go through it moping. Don't go through it whining and having a pity party and feeling sorry for yourself. Stand up. Through the pandemic, I watched hell attack my family and my home. But I'm here today to declare that I believe a line has been drawn now. I believe we're through the worst of it. Tell somebody I'm not dead. I'm still alive. It killed a lot of people that we loved. It killed a lot of people in this church. And the plague was real. And we all went through it emotionally and physically and spiritually. But a line is being drawn. And God is decreeing the death and the destruction. And the flies that are drawn to it. And Beelzebub, the Lord of flies. You know, he's called that seven times in the Bible, Satan, Beelzebub, Lord of the flies. But God can, God can decree a no-fly zone. People watch you more when you're going through hell. People watch you more when your marriage is in trouble and you feel like quitting, but you don't and you grab each other's hands and you fall to your knees and you plead the blood. And when the world says, give up and quit, you say, I can't quit because I've got a promise. And God says, I see that kind of faith. And the world says, whatever they've got is real. It's not a show either. It's real. Here's what, here's how you move into Goshen. How many of you would like for God to draw a line now after all we've been through, after all that we've gone through? How many of you would like to see God declare over our houses because the flies were in the houses according to the text, but he said, this is a no-fly zone. I believe today that we're in a time that we can step into Goshen. How do you do that? You have to live in the freedom of forgiveness. In other words, there's got to be an attitude shift that has to happen in our heart and in our spirit before we move into Goshen. We have to forgive. Forgiveness needs to gush out of us right now. We need to get as much conflict resolved with any and everybody right now. Forgiveness needs to ooze out of us because God's ready to move us into Goshen, but you can't go into Goshen until you're walking in the freedom of forgiveness. What converts an Egyptian is when they see how God's people respond to being done wrong. They don't get bitter. They don't get angry. They don't get hateful. They don't get mean. They don't get unforgiving. They begin to gush with the freedom of forgiveness. Have you suffered in such a way that your suffering wins souls or does it embitter people? You don't fall out of love if you're married. You don't fall out of love. You fall out of forgiveness. Relationships are sustained by forgiveness. And if you don't have relationship with people, it's because it's not being sustained by forgiveness. The only thing that sustains any human relationship is forgiveness. And the day you stop giving it, then suddenly the flies come because there's decay, there's deterioration, there is that, that, that rotting, there is that that dying of that. But the moment that you say, I forgive, not in word, but in heart and in spirit, look out. God says, I declare a fly free zone, a shoe fly. Oh, y'all ain't going to preach with me, but I don't need your help. I'll preach to my own self. Glory to God. Preach. Hallelujah. Suffer differently. Suffer differently. I'm not a victim. Yeah, we went through stuff. Our family went through stuff, but I'm not defeated this morning. I'm not beat up this morning. I've been through it, but you're not going to know it by the look on my face. 
and you're not going to hear it in my words. Glory to God. And by the way, you're not going to smell it on me. I'm going to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The Bible said they went through the fire, but there was no smell of smoke in their clothes. Yeah, they didn't smell like and look like and sound like the hard thing they had been through. Stop whining. Stop whining. Turn to somebody and say, are you still pitiful? Are you still plugged into pity? You don't know what they did to me. You can't have pity and power at the same time. So just live in the past. Just live in it. Let the grudge go. Let the bitterness go. Let the unforgiveness go. And you know what? You won't just free them. You'll free yourself. Welcome to Goshen. There's life here. There's light here. There's favor here. There's provision here. You'll be sitting in the shade sipping lemonade saying, look what the Lord has done when you let go of bitterness. A scab is something that tries to heal a wound. And there are things that happen Years ago, some five years ago. And just about the time that it heals, you take your dirty little fingernails and you scrape it off. And then the healing has to start all over again. And wounds that have been there for year after year after year. Turn to somebody beside you and say, take your dirty fingernails out of that and let it heal. A scar, a scar is proof that you left something alone long enough to let it heal. Zip your mouth, throw up your hands, and pray to God, and release forgiveness, and watch God begin to heal relationships and broken places in your life. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel so that you can get notifications on new posts and live streams. Be sure to share this video with a friend. You never know how you can send the Word of God right when somebody needs to hear it. And you can use your social influence for good, for the glory of God. Thanks again. Share it with a friend. And I really appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.